It has been a hard 2018 for Williams, Sauber and Toro Rosso. Full of struggles, inconsistency and having to develop the car. But who out of these three teams came away with a positive 2018? The only way to find out is in this video. First let's start off with Sauber who came off the back of a horrible 2017. And they were hoping with a new Ferrari engine and the backing of Alfa Romeo they were going to be a lot better. And a lot closer to the top of the midfield. But in pre-season, yes the car looked better but it was still not that good. And required a lot of development and work. But by the time we got to Baku, it was clear to see that Sauber were making progress. As for example, the first race in Australia, they were very slow. And then in Baku, they finished in P6 with Charles Leclerc. And this also includes a P9 for Marcus Ericsson in Bahrain. So a good start for Sauber despite the car not being that great. Then as we got into the European season, the Sauber car just improved. With Charles Leclerc finishing the points in Spain, Canada and France. Sauber were now solid contenders for points finishes. Something a year ago you wouldn't even imagine. And after a double points finish in Austria and a great qualifying at Silverstone, things just got better and better and better for Sauber. But after their double retirement at the British Grand Prix until the Italian Grand Prix, they only got worse, as they were now struggling to finish in the points. But as we left Europe, Sauber made a massive jump, as they were now consistently for the rest of 2018 with both cars going for points, with Charles Leclerc getting points in Russia, Mexico, Brazil and Abu Dhabi. And Marcus Ericsson also getting a couple of points finishes as Sauber ended the season as one of the best teams in the midfield. A stark contrast to one year ago. And you cannot doubt this team has come on leaps and bounds in just one season. And it's great to see this team doing well again. But this is what Sauber did in 2018, so their best race result was P6 in Baku, with the best qualifying result of P7. With 16 points finishes and 48 points. They are without a doubt the most improved team in 2018. But they couldn't have done it without their superstar young driver Charles Leclerc. Who in 2018 had a best race result of P6 and a best qualifying result of P7. And also had 10 points finishes and 39 points. No wonder he's going to Ferrari for 2019. He is one hell of a driver. But let's not forget that Marcus Ericsson also had a good 2018 as he had a best race result of P9 and a best qualifying result of P7 in Brazil, with 6 points finishes and 9 points, and in my opinion has done enough to earn himself a seat in 2019, but unfortunately he does not have one. So hopefully in 2019 he does well in IndyCar. Now their best race of 2018 has to be Brazil, where they qualify 7th and 8th with both cars and Charles Leclerc finished in P7. And for the first time in a while, they had the best car in the midfield. So no surprise there, it has to be their best race. Their worst race though for me was the Italian Grand Prix. Because the type of car they had in 2018 should have been a lot better at that track. Especially when you consider they have the best power unit on the grid. If they were so fast at Interlagos, which is very similar to Monza, then how come they weren't so quick here? And this is why for me this is their worst Grand Prix. But again in 2018 this team has come just so far. But there is still progress to be made. As in 2019 they're hoping to compete at the front of the midfield. And hopefully new drivers Kimi Raikkonen and Antonio Giovinazzi can propel them to that. Now let's move on to Toro Rosso who came into 2018 with a new engine supplier in Honda. And because of Honda's troubles ever since 2015, Toro Rosso knew that 2018 was going to be a year of development. And that's exactly what it was. But the results during the season were actually better than expected. And you could especially tell for Honda that things already in pre-season were looking good. As the power unit so far was holding up. The real test though was once the season actually started. And even though at a couple of the first four races Toro Rosso weren't really that good... Their highlight was Bahrain where Pierre Gasly finished in P4. The best result this team has had since Singapore 2017. And Honda's best since they returned to the sport in 2015. That was a truly special day. But could they build on this? Well they would continue to get great results for example P7 in Monaco. 
but there was already a trend appearing, a trend of inconsistency. Toro Rosso would get very great results, but then for most of the races after that, they would be very poor, and not really that close to the points. And this was proven after an out-of-nowhere P6 finish for Pierre Gasly in Hungary, after the races before were quite poor and actually mediocre. This team would only get a good result in one in every four races, but after the summer break that did improve. Now maybe they didn't get as many points finishes as they could have, but they were consistently in the second half of the season closer to the points than they were in the first half. And this was also helped by an improvement by Honda, as in the second half of the season it was now clear that Honda had passed Renault for having the third best engine on the grid, as Honda had a very good year of development. But still this season for me for Toro Rosso was inconsistent. You just never knew when they were going to pull a result out of the bag. And that describes their 2018. And this is what they did in 2018, so their best race result was P4 in Bahrain and a best qualifying result of P6. With 8 points finishes and 33 points. And their number 1 driver for 2018, Pierre Gasly, did have a good season. As he got a best race result of P4 in Bahrain and a best qualifying result of P6 in Hungary. With 5 points finishes and 29 points. Now I will say I don't rate Pierre Gasly that high. But on his day clearly he is a very good driver. And I guess that's why he's driving for Red Bull in 2019. Brendan Hartley though had a very bad 2018. He had a best race result of P9 and a best qualifying result of P6 at Suzuka. But he only had 3 points finishes and 4 points. Brendan, I'm afraid, did not do enough for a seat in 2019. As for most of the season, let's be honest, he was terrible. And that's why he's out at Toro Rosso. Now, the team's best race is obviously Bahrain. As for one, that's the most competitive their car has been in 2018. And is their best race result. So that has to be their best Grand Prix. Their worst, though, for me, is Russia. As for one, they started at the back because of engine penalties. And then both cars were out within 5 laps of the Grand Prix. With the same mysterious braking failure. So for me that has to be their worst. In 2019 though Toro Rosso have a completely new driver lineup in Daniel Kvyat and Alexander Albon. But as long as the Toro Rosso car aerodynamically is still good. And the Honda power unit is a lot better in 2019. I think they're going to have another solid season. And now let's get on to Williams. A team that was absolutely piss poor in 2018. And the signs of that were clear in testing. Where their cars in the timesheets were normally right at the back. And their car looked like a horror show to drive. And things did not look good at all for 2018. And it turned out to be their worst season in their history. But like we have done on the channel guys since the Canadian Grand Prix. I'm not going to go super deep into this team. As we all know right now they are irrelevant. And I don't think I need to say any more about how bad of a season it was. Just take a look here for yourself. In 2018 they had a best race result of P8 and a best qualifying result of P10. With 3 points finishes and 7 points. What an awful season. And Lance Stroll's best race result was also P8 and his best qualifying result was also P10. And had 2 points finishes and 6 points. Stroll though for me was still not that good as he was outqualified by this man, Sergei Sorokin, who had a best race result of P10 and a best qualifying result of P12, but only had one points finish, which was in Italy, where he got one point. I knew this team were going to be bad in 2018, but this is shocking. Now, when it comes to their best race, it has to be Baku, because that's where they got their best result. But when it comes to their worst race, I don't know. You could basically pick any race where they didn't finish in the points. So in the comments guys, take your pick as to what their worst Grand Prix of 2018 was. But this team has to improve in 2019. Where they're going to have new drivers in George Russell and Robert Kubica. This team cannot keep going the way it is. They have to improve especially when it comes to the aerodynamic department. Because this car might just be the worst car they have ever built. I am willing to give Paddy Lowe one more chance, but if he gets the 2019 car so horribly wrong, for me he is done and he has to be sacked. Because the car he built for 2018 is so, so, so poor. 
And if Williams somehow are worse in 2019, then Claire Williams has to go. In fact, she has to go right now. She is the reason why Williams are in the mess they're in. By employing technical personnel which are not good enough and drivers which are not good enough. Such as Lance Stroll and Sergei Sorokin. Now I don't really want to say this, but it's the truth. She is only there because she is a part of the Williams family. If she was not a part of the Williams family, there's no way she'd be the boss of that team. Not a chance in hell. And that maybe just says it all. But as long as they're better in 2019, at least that's a start. And then hopefully over the next few years, they can build on that. But if they're somehow worse in 2019, then this team is doomed. So hopefully some kind of actual progress is made. But again, for these three teams, it has been a hard 2018. But a couple of these teams are going into 2019 on a positive as one is going in on a negative. But hopefully in 2019, all of these teams can improve. But anyway guys, that has been it for this video. Don't forget to hit the like button and subscribe for more content like this. Don't forget guys, I'll be back on Thursday with a season review of 2018 for Formula 2. Don't forget to join my Discord server, link below in the description, also with my Twitter and my website. Comment down below what you thought of this video and what did you think of Williams, Toro Rosso and Sauber's 2018. Please comment down below what you think about those topics and until next time, it's been me, Chazzer HD. goodbye.